Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne hackman Carty. In today's episode, I'm talking to Dr. Greg Valentine. He's the director for the Center of Geohazard Studies at the University of Buffalo. He's a volcanologist, so he knows a lot about volcanoes and the hazards they produce. So stay tuned as I talk to him a little bit about what's happening on a global scale when it comes to volcanoes and how people can prepare in small ways. So stay tuned. Hi, Greg, how are you doing today? I'm great, thanks. So before we get started on our topic today, if you can just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, your background. Okay, I have a PhD in geology that I earned way back in 1988, seems like a long time ago. I worked at a, at a U.S. National Research Laboratory for about 20 years and then came to the University at Buffalo in uh, 2008. Um, the University of Buffalo, surprising to many people, has had one of the main volcano research groups in the United States in, in terms of universities. Um, seems strange. People always ask me, why Buffalo? But we can get into that if you want. But since... Uh, since coming to Buffalo, I've been working on volcanoes mainly in the American Southwest, in South America, France, and Italy, um, and uh, on a range of different topics, mostly related to understanding eruption processes, especially related to explosive eruptions. So you did set me up. Uh, so why Buffalo? Why Buffalo? Well, uh, it all goes back to one person who came here about 30 years ago to be the chair of the department and he was a volcanologist and he cut a deal to be able to hire a couple of other volcanologists and then it just it just went on from there. Uh, but one of the things we find is that uh, Buffalo is actually a great location because vol as volcano scientists we work all over the world and uh, from Buffalo, you can basically be at any volcano within 24 hours on Earth for most volcanoes. Um, so it, it's actually a great location and we're safe from volcanoes. So. Yeah. so when you look on a worldwide scale, where would you say the most volcan volcanic activity is currently? Well, the most uh, volcanic activity in the strict sense is on the sea floor but that doesn't really affect uh, humans very much. The volcanism that affects people are in places like the Pacific Rim of Fire that a lot of people have heard about. So around the, uh, around the rim of the Pacific Ocean, um, some other places like Italy, um, Eastern Africa, and some islands around the world uh, are also quite dangerous. But most of the really dangerous volcanoes are related to uh, situations like we see in the Pacific uh, Ring of Fire, where ocean, the, cr the Earth's crust beneath the oceans is, is going underneath continents or other ocean crust and it, it starts melting and causes problems. Well, so the work you do, I think it can be extremely valuable for people who are, you know, whether historically their communities have been built by volcanoes or mm -hmm. even more recently. I'm just curious, tell me a little bit more about the work you do and how that can be applied to, to what, you know, communities right now that live by active or even dormant volcanoes. Right. The work that that I'm doing really focuses on what causes volcanoes to explode and then what happens when they explode. So ultimately what we're working towards is, is having an understanding that allows us to make better predictions and forecasts. Um, and uh, some of the things that we've been doing recently include studying uh, volcanoes that have been acting up for a long period of time. So Kilauea was one of those. Uh, another one in California that's called Long Valley that most people actually don't know about, but it's a, it's a volcanic system that's been kind of acting strange for the last 30 years or so. And um, it hasn't erupted yet, but uh, we, we kind of wonder if it, if it will in the future. 
Is there anything, uh, and this may be a very naive question, but I'm curious, is there anything a, a human intervention can do to help stop a potential eruption? Or is it just basically, you got to monitor it, you got to plan for it, and it's going to happen if it's going to happen? Yeah, there's really nothing that people can do to stop a volcano. It's a, it's a big system. The earth is big, and uh, it's, yeah, you can't control that. So what we really try to do is um, try to make good forecasts for volcanic activity. And that requires us to understand what a volcano has done in the past. So um, we study the geology of a volcano, which provides a record of what it's done during its lifetime. And then we also monitor it. So we, um, we measure earthquakes, we measure how the shape of the volcano may be changing. We measure the gases that are coming out of a volcano. And when we see changes in those things, then, then we might suspect that an eruption might be preparing uh, to occur. Are there things that you can do uh, you know, like I said, if, if you don't have somebody actively monitoring it, is there things you can do to help prepare for what could be the inevitable? Well, if it's a volcano that's not being monitored, uh, there's a good chance that the people living on the volcano don't necessarily know that it's a volcano. Um, that's actually the case. Uh, if it had, if it's a, a volcano, it's just a mountain that has been there as long as anybody can remember and it, you know, we don't remember any eruptions, then uh, people may not even know it's a volcano. If you know it's a volcano, then uh, it's a good idea to make sure that you know how to get official information. Um, so be registered with uh, the government emergency planning, uh, Twitter pages and Facebook or, or whatever, or know how to get to their websites. Uh, quickly so that you can be aware of what um, the official guidance is at any given time, which hopefully is based on some science. Yeah. And um, follow that. Try not to pay too much attention to what's going on on social media that's not part of the official uh, thing. And then in terms of other things you can do to prepare, um, have a, a route in mind to get away and also be ready to pack, maybe have a, an evacuation kit. So uh, have a bag with a couple of changes of clothes and a toothbrush and, and stuff that you can just pick up and go. Yeah. Um, really the only thing you can do when an eruption is imminent, if the authorities are telling you to evacuate is evacuate. You can't, um, you can't stay home and spray water on your roof and keep the lava from coming. It's, uh, you just need to leave. Yeah. Yeah. And when you see photos of the lava and how hot it is and how it's just moving across roads right. and homes and you just think, yeah, there's, you just need to get out of the way. Um, right. So just before we wrap up, is there anything else that I might not have asked that you wanted to talk about? Well, I think another thing that's important is to understand that each volcano is different. And at any given volcano, each eruption that it has is going to be different from previous ones. So it's always tricky to understand exactly what they're going to do in the future. We, as scientists, try to do our best, but there's always going to be some uncertainty. And then if a volcano begins acting up, um, our understanding of the volcano will change with time. So our guidance and advice that we give to the government officials uh, may evolve through time. And I think it's important for people just to be prepared for, for that level of uncertainty and the fact that our, our knowledge changes through time. Um, it's good to use scientific information because otherwise, I don't know what sort of information you are using to make your personal decisions, um, but try to be comfortable with the fact that the scientific understanding and guidance can change. Um, dealing with uncertainty is one of the most complicated things that, that we have to, yeah. to work on. So, Yeah, no doubt. Well, thank you and, and good luck with the work that you're doing. And hopefully it's going to pay off for people who are at risk of, of something happening to them. So thank you. Good. Thanks for the opportunity.